so the spaceflight companies in the world have been doing their best. Just when Starship was making strides forward, one of its crucial components, the Raptor engine, encountered an unexpected issue, presenting a significant challenge for SpaceX in the near future. To interrupt my video topics lately and continue to give me very interesting things to talk about. Join us now to get the latest scoop in today's AB space. But fear not, as upcoming flights and plans may not be heavily impacted, especially with notable statements recently made by Bill Nelson. This is something we haven't seen a whole lot of lately, and that is of course explosions. On the test stand in McGregor, Texas, but this looked like a pretty serious one, in it is making some people wonder whether or not it's going to have any impact on the upcoming. Fourth flight of Starship is the FAA going to see this event as being something significant. Enough to have a look at the rocket that's about to take off that is after all powered by Raptor 2s to see whether or not they might have a reason to delay the launch to get a better idea as to whether or not these engines are really ready to fly or if they may be similarly flawed. Over the past few days, the activities at Starbase to prepare for Flight 4 have been incredibly exciting with Elon Musk even tweeting that we can expect Flight 4 in about 10 days. Unfortunately, this need for caution comes in the wake of a serious problem with the Raptor engine. Specifically on the afternoon of the 23rd of May at SpaceX's Engine Testing Center. In McGregor, Texas, an explosion occurred at the test stand during Raptor engine testing. The explosion was significant engulfing the entire test stand. As a result, the engine may have been completely destroyed and there could be damage to the Stu T test stand as well. Currently, SpaceX has not provided any updates regarding the incident, including its cause and the extent of the damages. It's been a while since SpaceX has faced such a major engine incident, highlighting the ongoing challenges with the Raptor engine. The recent test, like many others, is part of a series of tasks conducted by SpaceX before installing engines on rockets. After production at the factory, the engines undergo quality testing at the McGregor facility. If successful, they are delivered to Starbase for installation into the booster or ship, or they may be returned to the factory to await deployment. Many predictions suggest that the recently tested engine may be Raptor 3. This assumption is based on the fact that most of the prototypes referred to as version 1 are currently equipped with engines, leaving only B-14, S-3D-1, and S-32 prototypes without them. Additionally, Starship version 1 is utilizing the Raptor 2 version. Elon Musk mentioned plans to produce six Starship version 2 vehicles this year, analyzing his presentation from April, particularly the thrust parameters, it appears that Starship version 2 will transition to using Raptor 3. This is why many speculate that the tested engine was indeed Raptor 3, as there is a need to accelerate production and testing to meet the demand for Starship version 2. Raptor 3 was initially tested in the middle of last year and demonstrated impressive performance metrics. However, developing rocket engines is inherently challenging, and new versions like Raptor 3 require additional time for refinement before being officially deployed. The recent incident underscores the need for SpaceX to conduct a comprehensive review of its operations prior to the engine incident S-31 experienced an electrical issue while undergoing a cryo-jig test at the Massey test site. Currently, it remains in the high bay for repairs before resuming the testing process. As SpaceX accelerates its efforts to achieve new goals with Starship, it's encountering more challenges along the way, however setbacks are expected in the development of complex systems like rockets and engines. While everyone hopes for rapid progress to bring Starship into operation and meet future schedules, it's imperative for SpaceX engineers to take a moment to evaluate their systems. And ensuring certainty and stability is crucial as it lays the foundation for Starship's future advancements. What about OFT-4? Is SpaceX going to still be able to carry that out as expected around June 1st or so? Keep in mind, the FAA has not actually concluded the mishap report from OFT-3. They haven't analyzed everything or submitted the corrective actions. There are many things that are supposed to happen in the aftermath of a mishap investigation. Before Starship can return to flight, 
still has not transpired. However, as I reported before, SpaceX has requested an exception, something that they are allowed to do, given the fact that OFT3 at least apparently did not threaten any sort of public safety whatsoever at no time during the flight, even when things didn't go all that well, at no time did that rocket threaten anyone on the ground, and that being the case, the FAA should allow the fourth flight to go forward before the investigation of the third flight is concluded. Well, here's the good news. I asked for a comment from the FAA, and I got it in just six minutes after I requested it. Let me tell you something, the FAA is very responsive. I don't care what anybody says, they are really cooperative when it comes to providing information. The public safety determination request made by SpaceX applies to OFT3. If the FAA agrees that no public safety issues were involved, Starship could return to flight. Operations before the mishap investigation for OFT3 is completed, provided all license requirements are met. This process is unrelated to the Raptor issue. So regardless of what happened to the Raptor test in McGregor, regardless of how serious it might have been, regardless of what it might mean for Raptor 2 development, none of that is going to have an impact on this fourth flight. That having been said though, it's important to keep in mind that if this fourth flight does not go forward exactly as described, in other words, if it does not adhere to the flight plan, in other words, if Super Heavy does not set down gently in the Atlantic Ocean, in a controlled, sort of simulated landing on the ocean, and if the orbiter, if Starship, does not carry out at least an attempted landing in the Indian Ocean, if all of this doesn't go according to SpaceX's approved flight plan with the FAA, that's going to be another mishap. And there's going to be another mishap investigation, and we probably shouldn't expect another flight for at least a couple of months after this one. It's really important that SpaceX master this process difficult as it is. Although I have to admit, I think it's unrealistic to expect that SpaceX is going to get the re-entry and landing procedure for the orbiter down pat anytime really soon, which means I think the development process for Starship is not going to go forward as quickly as SpaceX would like, and that of course will have a significant impact on their obligations with Artemis. All that aside though, I think that Starship is developing very quickly, given how complicated and ambitious this project is, so I think we have every reason to feel good about how things are going right now, but if you really want to see us land on the moon anytime soon, well, not feeling so good about that. Now I understand your concerns about whether the recent incident will impact the plasma. Starship, however I want to reassure you that there's no need to worry, at least don't worry too much because SpaceX is actively working to resolve the situation. In fact, Bill Nelson recently reiterated the significance and role of Starship, particularly in relation to the upcoming Flight 4 and its involvement in the Artemis program. Who's Bill Nelson? He's the head hodcho over at NASA. Here you go. At the Senate Appropriations Committee hearing Bill Nelson asserted, Artemis 3, if you compare it to the Apollo program, is a combination of Apollo 9, 10, and 11, which was the landing on the moon. The comparison underscores the significance of Artemis 3 for both NASA and the United States. With the current schedule set for September of 2026, Bill Nelson has once again highlighted the crucial role that SpaceX will play in this mission. And so it is a difficult task, and if we land, it is dependent on SpaceX having their lander. Ready. Now they have hit all of their milestones, and in a couple of weeks they're going to launch that huge rocket that has 33 Raptor engines in its tail, and they're going to do more, showing the spaceworthiness of it. It is my hope that SpaceX will be ready with their lander. SpaceX and Starship are currently under scrutiny regarding their capabilities, progress, and suitability for the Artemis 3 mission. Some sources even suggest that NASA is exploring alternative missions or options if Starship fails to meet the mission requirements. However, Bill Nelson's reasons of formations, affirmation reinforces SpaceX's role and the significance of the landing mission in Flight 4, indicating that everything is still on course. Moving forward, the agency will closely monitor Starship's landing attempts and crucial 
tests next year, such as propellant transfers between the two ships. These efforts aim to ensure that the U.S. maintains its leadership in lunar exploration despite stiff competition from other nations, notably China. Do you have faith in SpaceX and Starship? Please, tell us with a yes or a no in the comments section down below. Additionally, during the aforementioned hearing, Nelson reiterated his firm stance on the cost and schedule of the entire program. Specifically, Senator Jean Shaheen, chair of the Senate Appropriations Committee's Commerce, Justice and Science Subcommittee, raised concerns about Artemis costs and suggested that the agency conduct an independent review of these expenses. Senator Shaheen queried Nelson about NASA's efforts to hold contractors accountable for cost overruns and scheduling delays, including whether the agency withheld payments to contractors for such issues. Her concerns stem from past studies of the overall costs of the program, including an estimate by NASA's Office of Inspector General suggesting that each of the first for space launch systems slash Orion launches would cost $4.2 billion. Given the high cost, has NASA considered an independent review board for exploration? Shaheen inquired. In response, Nelson argued that such a review was unnecessary. He stated that companies are docked for award fee payments if their performance falls short. Nelson also underscored NASA's utilization of commercial partnerships in the Artemis program such as the Human Landing System program, which employs fixed-price contracts. NASA officials have expressed some frustrations with the level of outsized scrutiny on the Artemis program. They complained that the most recent audit by the Office of Inspector General related to the agency's readiness for the Artemis II mission did not uncover any issues that had not already been addressed. Additionally, working with the auditors caused disruptions to ongoing workflow and priorities for those involved in the upcoming mission. Regarding Artemis II, after a question from Senator Jerry Moran, Nelson confirmed that the launch remains scheduled for September 2025 despite ongoing work on the Orion heat, shield and other technical issues. He also emphasized, however, that they will not fly until the spacecraft is fully ready. Turning our attention to the European Space Agency, or ESA, as they'd like to be referred to by, referred to as, preparations are underway for the first mission of the Ariane 6 rocket. The inaugural launch of the Ariane 6 is anticipated in the first half of July with the vehicle taking shape at its launch site in French Guiana. ESA announced on May 21st that the joint team working on the Ariane 6, including ESA, Prime, contractor Ariane Group, launch services provider Ariane Space, and the French Space Agency, Nice, and anticipates the inaugural launch of the Ariane 6 rocket to occur in the first two weeks of July. This falls within the timeframe previously indicated by ESA, spanning from the middle of June to the end of July. ESA stated that a specific albiotetative date for the launch will be disclosed at the ILA Airshow in Berlin, scheduled for June 5th to the 9th. In the latest update, ESA reported the completion of the qualification review on April 29th. Additionally, workers have commenced the stacking of the rocket itself, attaching its two solid rocket boosters to the core stage. The upper stage and payloads are slated for installation in June, preceding a fueling test and practice countdown referred to as a wet rest rehearsal, scheduled for June 18th. Although there is no official launch date yet, all parties involved remain confident that everything is proceeding according to schedule. Julio Ronzo, chief executive of AVO, the company producing the solid rocket motors, for the Ariane 6 strap-on boosters expressed optimism, stating, It seems to me we're going in the right direction for a flight in July. There are high expectations for this upcoming flight. A successful launch of the long-awaited Ariane 6 would help alleviate the launcher crisis. That has led ESA and the European Commission to procure multiple Falcon 9 launches from SpaceX. Joseph Oshbacher, Director General of ESA, acknowledged the inherent risks, stating, Statistically there is a 47% chance the first flight may not succeed or happen exactly. As planned. We'll do everything we can to make it a successful flight, but I think it's something that we have to keep in mind.
And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.